Thank you, Parvati, for the nice introduction. Also, I also uh -huh. welcome all the attendees. Please see the guidelines for today's session. The total one hour session will be divided into two continuous sessions. Each session will be of 20 minutes lecture and 10 minutes of question and answer interaction. During the interaction time, students may use the question and answer chat window. Please note the question and answer chat window by clicking the raise hand icon near to your name. All students are requested to maintain a classroom decorum throughout the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, all of you. Um, I'm so happy to associate with us up during these online classes taken during the pandemic season, COVID-19. Actually, uh, in today's session, I will be engaging a topic on uh, Environmental Engineering 2, that is for SH Civil Engineering students. And in this session, I am going to deal with a topic on self-purification capacity of streams. There is a saying that a river is an ocean in a desert. It shows the importance of a river. When we see the rivers in its full vigor and its healthy condition, we all will be very happy to see that. But at the same time, there may be some kind of scenes which may disappoint us. Maybe like a disposal of sewage. What happens to a stream when we are disposing a fluent, a sewage, to a river? Because we are depending on rivers for most of our daily needs, for our drinking purpose, cooking purpose, everything. In Kerala, we have nearly uh, 44 number of rivers and we, we are depending on rivers for most of our water supply projects. But uh, when they are getting contaminated, when they are getting polluted, what will happen? How it gets purified? All these are discussed under this session. As Parvati indicated, our session is for one hour and I will be uh, sticking on to selected topics. I will first of all go through an overview. In the first session, I will be concentrating on sewage disposal by dilution, self-purification of streams, factors affecting self-purification capacity, zones of pollution, uh, deoxygenation and reoxygenation, oxygen sac curve, and in the second session, I will be uh, discussing Streeter Phelps equation and uh, we will be discussing some problems based on that and also I will be covering some uh, questions, selected questions from university examination question papers. So as I already discussed, it's a beautiful view when we see a river in a very healthy condition. So here as you see in the picture, when rivers are flowing in its natural condition, it will be very pure and we can even drink water directly from that. But sometimes when we are discharging our effluent, actually disposal to a nearby water course or a river, that is the easiest method of disposing our wastewater and effluents. So because of that, if we are taking up a point for disposing our wastewater, for example, if a sewage is getting in, introduced into a point here. From there onwards, we are not seeing the purity or pure nature of the stream. There onwards, the river is getting contaminated. So, if the point of disposal is here, from there, the upstream point will be considered as a pure region and the downstream of that will be considered as an impure region. But, it won't be existing as such like that. When the river is flowing, Later on, we will be seeing some point where the river water will be again gaining back its own pure condition. So, how it happens? What is the mechanism behind that? Actually, there are natural means or the ways by which nature itself will purify water. And there are so many mechanisms involved in that. And there are some factors uh, by which it will be getting purified. And we will be discussing these factors or conditions. And we will be discussing the methods by which it will get purified in the first session.
disposal by dilution is an easy task you as you can see in the uh, picture when we are discharging our effluent to a nearby water course a river whenever we are discharging that we have to observe that there should be some conditions which will be maintained if you observe these pictures you can see that these particular water bodies are having large quantity of water and the sewage which is joining to that they are of lesser quantity you may be able to see that this uh, sewage that sewage which is joining to this river is having different color it, it is having turbidity and uh, uh, such conditions you may be able to see here you are able to see the flow of that river so when there is flow taking place that is an ideal condition for a sewage to join to that river if a river is able to get back its initial conditions of pure conditions by some natural processes that process is known as self purification of streams the natural process of purification purification are dilution sedimentation oxidation reduction processes in presence of sunlight and uh, at varying temperature these different conditions will enable the purification process and this automatic way or the natural way of purification of polluted water is known as self purification disposal by dilution is adopted under specific conditions here waste water should be quite fresh and suspended solids may not be present it should be removed to maximum possible extent and this volume of the receiving body that is the river which is receiving this waste water that should be having large volume compared to the discharge or the effluent dilution water should have high bod so that the bod of the waste water can be satisfied and there will be swift forward currents for example when uh, very turbid conditions are there there will be easy mixing up of this waste but at the same time there is a factor that is sedimentation which will be enhanced when there is swift current only we will discuss these factors later and one important point is that waste water should not contain any toxic substances can you give some examples for toxic entities for example if cyanide is there in the effluent that is not allowed to dispose to this river water so that kind of toxic elements are not allowed to get mixed up with rivers and water even if it is pure after the self purification process water is not fit for drinking immediately after this uh, point of discharge so these are the conditions upon which we will be uh, depending upon disposal as a, an option for uh, sewage discharge there are some indices as i have already mentioned when we are looking upon self purification there are some indices they are some features which will be giving us an idea about the purity of river purity of water physical indices are examples are color turbidity etc there are some chemical indices for example the suspended solids dissolved oxygen value value of bod cod etc of course there are some biological indices biological indices means the uh, species like micro or macro organisms these are also con considered as indicators so these are some indicators of self purification when a sewage or an effluent is joining a river water in due course we may be able to observe these changes in the river water sometimes it may be imparting a color change sometimes it may be imparting a turbidity even the uh, at the point of disposal and where the uh, flow is taking place there may be change in the smell of water also and all these are some indicators and of course we may be able to identify some kind of species change in the life uh, which is present in river water so that also can be uh, considered as an indicator and based on this self purification can be observed there are some mechanisms 
first we will discuss the forces or some actions which are involved in the self purification of streams as i already discussed first we will discuss the dilution and dispersion phenomena dilution when we are discharging the waste water to a receiving water body it is getting mixed up this pollutants are getting mixed up with a large volume of water and because of that this large volume of water will be providing more amount of dissolved oxygen and because of that this waste will be getting treated up so dilution is first and foremost uh, which we can consider as the force which will do self purification process so aerobic conditions will lead to self purification dispersion due to currents when there is mixing up these pollutants will be taken away so these pollutants will be taken away along with the stream and if there is high velocity there will be rapid mixing and this uh, concentration of the pollutants will be getting reduced and when there is high velocity that will aid in reaeration also reaeration means taking up of oxygen again from the atmosphere back to the river so that reaeration will also be enhanced when there is dispersion due to current and one more thing when there is less velocity there is chance that the solids will be getting settled so sedimentation will be taking place actually sedimentation will also lead to this kind of self purification sedimentation is happening when the uh, stream velocity is lesser than the score velocity of particles so at that time the particles which are present in water will be getting settled down suspended solids will be contributing largely to bod and that will be removed by settling process so when there is organic content present in that that will be getting decomposed so sedimentation will enable to reduce that kind of problems so sedimentation will enable the particles to settle down and when there is settlement there is chance that if dissolved oxygen is absent there is chance that there will be anaerobic decomposition of all this organic matter associated with the solids which are getting settled presence of sunlight will lead to purification when sunlight is present sunlight is actually a disinfectant so sunlight itself will act as a disinfectant and it will purify sunlight will enable or help in photosynthesis so when photosynthesis is taking place in presence of sunlight there will be more amount of algal growth so when algae is flourishing in water uh, rich algal growth will lead to more photosynthesis and there will be presence of more dissolved oxygen in the daytime temperature is an, another factor when um, it is influencing the self purification process in two different ways when temperature is high that temperature will be leading to more activities from the part of bacteria all the bacteria microorganisms which will lead to this kind of act, uh, action that is purification process all these reaction rate will be enhanced when there is more temperature so uh, there are two effects as i said there are two effects when temperature is high dissolved oxygen will be more uh, will be less so when dissolved oxygen is less treatment will be less so in that the two way temperature will be making an influence there are two different ways of action when temperature is high there will be reduced dissolved oxygen present in the water but when temperature is high microorganisms and our reactions all these activities will be taking place in a faster rate so in that two way temperature will be influencing the process of purification oxidation and reduction these are other two mechanisms when aerobic bacteria is utilizing the dissolved oxygen that will be leading to oxidization of all this waste matter organic matter all organic matter will be getting decomposed in the presence of oxygen so aerobic reactions will be taking place and these microorganisms will be able to decompose all this waste matter in the presence of oxygen so oxidation is a process which will lead to decomposition and purification reduction is another mechanism when um, reduction occurs all the um, matter will be getting reduced anaerobic bacteria especially the anaerobic bacteria uh, in the absence of oxygen they will be doing the treatment process 
and by that mechanism there will be release of other products like methane uh, n2 all these will be ammonia all these will be released in the absence of oxygen so reduction is also another mechanism so i will summarize we have mainly processes such as dilution dispersion sedimentation presence of sunlight temperature oxidation and reduction which will lead to self purification of rivers now we will consider how this dilution and dispersion can be expressed in a mathematical form when sewage concentration of cs flows at a rate of qs in a river stream with concentration cr flowing at a rate of qr what is the resulting concentration of any parameter in that particular river here river is flowing um, at a flow rate qr a particular parameter for example dissolved oxygen or uh, suspended solids or uh, bod or uh, anything like that this parameter is present in a quantity in a concentration cr in the river and in the sewage we are discharging a sewage to that in the sewage concentration of that pollutant or that particular characteristic that is cs and the flow is taking place at the rate qs in the sewage so what is the resulting concentration in that mixture here it can be expressed using expression cs qs plus cr qr is equal to c into qs plus qr here c is the concentration of the resulting mixture so c is the c is equal to cs qs plus cr qr divided by total flow qs plus qr we will uh, solve a simple problem to understand it better read this question sewage of a town is to be discharged into a river stream quantity of sewage produced per day is 8 million liters and its bod is 250 mg per liter if the discharge in the river is 200 liters per second and its bod is 6 mg per liter find out bod of the diluted water what we need to find out is the bod of the resulting water sewage is getting discharged into a river water and that sewage is having uh, 8 million liters of quantity bod in that the sewage is 250 mg per liter river is having a flow of 200 liters per second its bod is 6 mg per liter how will we find out the bod of the resulting mixture we will use this expression csq c is equal to csqs plus crqr divided by qs plus qr here cs stands for the concentration of that parameter in sewage what is that in sewage concentration is 250 mg per liter what is the quantity of flow of sewage here you have to observe that this quantity of sewage is given as 8 million liters per day we will convert that to liters per second because all other units are in liters and second so converting 8 million liters is equal to 8 into 10 raised to 6 liters that divided by converting this day to seconds we will convert by 24 into 60 into 60 dividing by 24 into 60 into 60 we are getting 92.59 liters per second substituting here bod of the diluted mixture c is equal to cs 250 into qs 92.59 plus cr 6 mg per liter into qr 200 liters per second that divided by total flow qs plus qr 92.59 plus 200 so we will be able to get the answer concentration of bod in the resulting water that is when we are discharging the sewage to a nearby river we are getting the bod of the resulting mixture as 83.21 mg per liter that was a simple problem now we will further proceed with the next session that is sources of pollution in a stream
when we are discharging waste water into uh, in a particular point in a river initially that zone is considered as a clear water zone there we are discharging our effluent so what will happen when we are discharging the effluent there will be lot of changes occurring in the river water so initially there will be a pure water or a clear water zone and we are expecting that dissolved oxygen will be or uh, able to remember that oxygen will be getting dissolved in water to a maximum extent at a particular temperature so when uh, say for example at 20 degrees celsius let us say 9.17 milligram per liter is the maximum dissolved oxygen which can be present at that temperature so here in this river water if temperature is 20 degrees celsius and as it is a clear water zone we are expecting that that dissolved oxygen level is 9.17 milligram per liter itself so it is 100 percentage saturation do present there after a particular travel it starts showing some changes and there st starts a zone of degradation in the clear water zone there won't be any bottom sludge there will be different type of micro and macro organisms present there we will be able to see fishes fish life will be plenty and after that zone there will be a zone where degradation of this waste matter starts so when degradation starts the we can observe that dissolved oxygen is getting reduced so from that 100 percentage value it reaches to nearly 40 percentage so that kind of a reduction occurs in that next zone which is known as zone of degradation zone of degradation is found where the sewage is discharged before starting of this zone stream have saturation do at the end of this zone do reduces to 40 percentage of saturation do water becomes dark and turbid that is another indication here water will become dark in color and it will it will show turbidity so there will be some kind of floating solids here there will be bottom sludge and there will be a change in color and there will be turbid conditions prevailing then comes next zone where these changes will be more there will be more darker color and the area will be indicated by difference in smell some kind of putrescible smell that kind of uh, obnoxious smell will be there and that that shows that decomposition is again taking place in the absence of oxygen here you can see that the dissolved oxygen level will be again going down and down and it reaches to zero oxygen is absent in this zone that zone is known as zone of active decomposition in zone of active decomposition it is having some specific characteristics it exists after zone of degradation this zone is showing heavy pollution water becomes darker than of previous zone and there will be some kind of black scum at the top here very important point is that dissolved oxygen will be reaching nearly to zero and there will be anaerobic conditions prevailing and as a result of this fish disappear in this zone because fish and aquatic species cannot survive in the absence of oxygen we say that nearly 4 to 5 milligram per liter of dissolved oxygen is very essential for the survival of fish life so when dissolved oxygen is absent it harmfully affects the uh, life of this kind of fish and because of that fish disappear in this zone this kind of impacts you might have heard in different uh, areas where if you have observed any kind of such issues you can correlate with this in some rivers you might have seen that fish is absent because of lack of dissolved oxygen there so when pollution is more because of the sewage disposal and more kind of pollution occurring in rivers fish life will be absent in that dissolved oxygen when do is reaching to zero 
no fish can survive in that and anaerobic bacteria exist there anaerobic bacteria are bacteria which can survive in the absence of oxygen so they will start the decomposition and there will be release of methane hydrogen sulfide carbon dioxide etc when do is reaching to zero there will be more amount of protozoans and fungus so these will be present and they will be becoming part or they will be associating in the decomposition and at the end of this on again we can see that this particular dissolved oxygen value is shooting up here do is reaching to zero in zone of active decomposition but at the end of this it will be again touching the 40 percentage do line here you can see that this line is again increasing and it is reaching to 40 percentage do line so we discussed there will be a clear water there will be a zone of degradation after that and in zone of degradation dissolved oxygen reaches to 40 percentage and at the end of that zone of active decomposition starts and in zone of active decomposition dissolved oxygen reaches to zero and when uh, we proceed further at the end of that zone again dissolved oxygen rises and after complete decomposition by anaerobic bacteria again oxygen will be taken back to the water from atmosphere and after dissolving of oxygen oxygen will be improved to nearly 40 percentage at the end of zone of active decomposition there on onwards we see that another zone starts that zone is known as zone of recovery in zone of recovery river is gaining its initial vigor back that is it is again and again it is getting back oxygen from the atmosphere so from 40 percentage dissolved oxygen it is increasing to saturation do so at the end of zone of recovery again dissolved oxygen is reaching back to original condition so organic matter all organic matter gets stabilized dod falls down uh, it is again it is having some turbidity and bottom sludge will be there organic matter will produce nitrates sulfates phosphates carbonates etc because again in the presence of oxygen these kind of activities take place and dissolved oxygen rises to 40 percentage of saturation value again algae comes back protozoans plants like sponges all these crustaceans rotifers everything comes back so in zone of recovery from 40 percentage dissolved oxygen it it reaches back to initial saturation condition then comes zone of cleaner water water is again clean because it have acted upon by all these um, processes oxidation reduction processes purification has taken place and at the end of that uh, it has passed through different zones and it has reached to the zone of cleaner water river attains its original conditions do reaches back to the saturation value water becomes attractive in appearance aquatic life again comes back and uh, initially i mentioned even at the end of self purification at that point also we are not expected to drink water directly from the river because there may be presence of some pathogenic uh, organisms there so what are the different zones of purification different zones of purification are zones of pollution are different zones of pollution of stream are we will start from clear clear water then we have different zones like zone of degradation zone of active decomposition zone of recovery and zone of clearer water we have four major zones zone of degradation zone of active decomposition zone of recovery zone of clearer water we have zone of degradation zone of active decomposition then zone of recovery and zone of clearer water in all these we may be able to identify these zones by the presence of uh, oxygen by the presence of um, microbial and macro species which survive in um, river of course we can identify the changes occurring in the turbidity in the uh, smell in the uh, cum uh, or floating matter and the sludge all these we can see in this different zones 
and the changes we can observe in all these zones. In clear zone, there will be different type of fishes and everything surviving there. In the next zone, that is zone of degradation. In zone of degradation, that number of fish life reduces and zone of active decomposition, it is also known as septic zone. In that zone, there will be very low dissolved oxygen, nearly it reaches to zero. And again, at the end of that, it starts recovery and recovery zone is after this and then the cleaner zone. So, all these four zones, zone of degradation, zone of active decomposition, zone of recovery and zone of clearer water, all these will help the uh, purification process of different pollutants which are released to the stream. Now, uh, you can um, observe that when from the point of disposal of sewage, when pollutants are getting oxidized, there will be oxygen consumed in the region. So, when oxygen is consumed, we may be able to plot that uh, in a graph. A graphical representation of that shows that dissolved oxygen content, it reduces when we consider the time of flow. So, here on x-axis, you are witnessing time of flow and on y-axis, it is the dissolved oxygen content. So, DO is getting reduced and reduced and such a curve which indicates the reduction occurring in dissolved oxygen because of the decomposition activities. Such a curve is known as deoxygenation curve. And a curve where oxygen absorption from the atmosphere is represented. That curve is shown here when from the atmosphere oxygen is taken into water. We are able to plot another graph. This is known as reoxygenation curve. Two curves are there. One is in a polluted stream, dissolved oxygen goes on reducing because decomposition of organic matter takes place. The rate of deoxygenation depends on the amount of organic matter remaining to be oxidized. This you might have studied in the uh, previous module where you have studied about VOD conversions. So, the VOD, it uh, amount of organic matter remaining to be oxidized at any time is expressed here as Lt. And rate of deoxygenation depends upon that amount of organic matter which is remaining to be oxidized. And temperature of the reaction T. This curve which is showing depletion of dissolved oxygen with time is known as deoxygenation curve. At the same time, atmosphere supplies oxygen to the water to counterbalance deoxygenation and the process is known as reoxygenation. It depends upon depth of the receiving water, condition of body of water, oxygen deficit and temperature of water. Reoxygenation that is the way in which oxygen is taken into the water body that is known as reoxygenation. It depends upon depth of the receiving water. What will happen if depth is more? When depth is more, reoxygenation will not be taking place uh, as in the condition where depth is shallow. In a shallow river, rate will be more. Easily, water will, uh, will be absorbing oxygen from the atmosphere. But when depth is high, when depth is more, dissolved oxygen will be taken in a very less manner. Condition of the body of water, that is, consider two uh, streams. One is stagnant and another one is flowing. Which one will uh, consume more amount of, uh, which one will pick up more amount of oxygen from atmosphere? Definitely the one which is mixing up or moving, that will be easily absorbing oxygen from the atmosphere. So that condition of uh, existence, that is if it is a moving water body or if it is a stagnant water body, depending upon that, there will be change in the absorption pattern. Then it depends upon the oxygen deficit. It is 
when the difference or the gradient existing is more there will be more absorption of oxygen and it also depends upon the temperature of water temperature is a criteria which will govern the intake of oxygen when temperature is less there will be more intake taking place and when temperature is more there won't be uh, that much uh, intake of oxygen in high temperature there will be less dissolved oxygen present in water but the reaction rate will be more when temperature is more reaction rate all the reaction rate will be more when temperature is more here you can see that we are representing the deoxygenation curve like this and the reoxygenation curve like this when time of flow is represented here from the point of pollution time of flow is expressed here and the do content is expressed on the y axis here you can see that deoxygenation curve and reoxygenation curve can be considered together and considering both these aspect that is the way in which oxygen is getting removed from water oxygen is consumed for the decomposition of organic matter and oxygen is absorbed from the atmosphere for the for recovering oxygen in the water content what in the water body so considering both these together if we are able to plot a graph we may be able to plot a curve like this you can see it starts from here and it decreases like this because initially deoxygenation is more so because of that this curve is sagging here and there is a point at which deoxygenation and reoxygenation rates are coming to an equal condition so that at that point there will be maximum deficit of dissolved oxygen and from there onwards again reoxygenation rate improves and more reoxygenation take place and finally this particular river water body will be showing saturation do so such a curve which is mentioned, which is shown there uh, by graphically adding both deoxygenation and reoxygenation curve is known as do sac curve this is known as an oxygen sac curve dissolved oxygen sac curve and in that do deficit is equal to saturation do minus actual dissolved oxygen saturation do minus actual do is equal to do deficit and for uh, expressing this in a mathematical way Streeter Phelps have developed an equation, and this is very much useful for analysis of a do sac curve. So, uh, how it goes? Uh, what is the Streeter Phelps equation? How it is expressed, and how we are able to utilize that uh, for solving different type of problems? All these we will discuss in the uh, next session. So. Uh, Parvati, if we are um, giving a break, it will be better to pause here, and then we will continue afterwards. Um, we have any questions? Shall I read it, ma'am? Ah, uh, sure, sure. Okay, ma'am. Uh, the question is: One second. During low temperature, there will be a reduction in bacterial activities by high, but high oxygen content compared to high temperature condition. Will decomposition take place at such situation of low temperature, since the bacterial activities are not possible, or it is that a situation when aerobic bacteria take part in decomposition? Do um, uh, I need to repeat the question? Ah, uh, please. Uh, I am not able to hear that completely. Okay, ma'am. Once more, I will say. During okay. low temperature, okay. there will be a reduction in bacterial activities. Ah, uh, yes. But high oxygen content. Compared to high temperature conditions, yeah. Will decomposition take place at such situation of low temperature, since yeah. the bacterial activities are not possible, or that is a situation when aerobic bacteria take part in decomposition? Actually, at low temperature, that question is um, correct. Uh, the, in low temperature condition, there will be uh, a reduction in the rate of reactions. But at the same time, at low temperature, there will be more dissolved oxygen present. 
So what mentioned in the question uh, is slightly twisting. Actually, in low con low temperature condition, there will be more dissolved oxygen and there will be aerobic bacteria surviving there. So they will be helping in decomposition activities. Uh, so definitely, decomposition activities will be taking place. Okay, okay, ma'am. And one more question is. Yes. Um, shall I ask? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Waste water can become septic by the loss of, there are options, dissolved oxygen content, carbon content, organic compound, water content. Question is, waste uh, yeah, water can is. become septic by the loss of, which of the following? Dissolved oxygen content, carbon content, organic compounds, water content. Septic means it is becoming highly polluted. So when dissolved oxygen is absent, it will be highly septic. So the heavy pollution will be indicated. That is what uh, we have mentioned here. That is when uh, when dissolved oxygen is reducing and reducing in this zone, it is becoming to a septic zone. So this zone is also known as septic zone. Zone of active decomposition is also known as septic zone because dissolved oxygen is absent there. Another question is, what are the important questions for this module? But I think uh, we shall discuss that in after completing the session. Yeah, sure. I will be uh, discussing the same at the end of the uh, session. Okay, ma'am. Then we can continue. Uh, actually, uh, continuing with that question, uh, in this, this module is a very vast module. Uh, I have picked up this topic because students will always get some confusion regarding such concepts that they have asked in the doubts also. And uh, they will be getting some difficulties in solving some problems here. So considering all these, but it's a very interesting module and uh, students should understand it in a very neat manner. That's why this topic is becoming more important. It is very uh, interesting module. At the same time, I will be getting more questions here and I have selected, I have made my presentation in such a way that students will be able to answer all the questions asked regarding this topic. Every question I have uh, made in such a way that I have selected all the topics considering the examination point of view and also the practical condition. Both these will be considered. In the next part, we will discuss the problems and towards the end of the session, we will be Discussing the questions also. Okay, ma'am. Okay. 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 Question is also relevant to this topic. Please. Uh, so, the question is: Zone of active decomposition lies in forty percent DO. Why forty percent? Ah, actually, uh, uh, we have a condition for survival of aquatic organisms. When aquatic organisms are considered, they should get a. Uh, nominal range of 4 to 5 milligram per liter of dissolved oxygen. So when we are considering uh, saturation DO, usually at our usual temperature conditions, maximum we are expecting uh, nearly 9 milligram per liter. So when we are considering this, we are expecting a critical deficit nearly 60 percentage of that. Minimum 40 percentage of that saturation DO should be present for survival of aquatic species. That's why that range is okay. Uh, okay. okay uh, all the doubts are collected now. So we will continue with the session. If you have any further doubts, you can ask in the question and answer window. So we are continuing the session. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We will continue uh, here um, in the second session. Uh, This is the expression for Friedefeld's equation. By superimposing rate of deoxygenation and reoxygenation, we are expressing, uh, Friedefeld's have expressed in this way, that is, dt is equal to kd into L divided by kr minus kd into 10 raised to minus kd into t minus 10 raised to minus kr into t plus d naught into 10 raised to minus kr into t. Here, KD is the deoxygenation constant. KR is the reoxygenation constant. 
and DT is the DO deficit in milligram per liter after T days. L is the ultimate BOD. L stands for the ultimate BOD and T is the time taken for up to that point and KD usually it is expressed at 20 degrees Celsius and if we want to convert KD to any other temperature our river water or the uh, existence of that uh, water may be at a different temperature so reaction rate uh, deoxygenation coefficient KD at that temperature can be found out by using an expression KD at uh, KD at any temperature T is equal to KD at 20 into 1.047 raised to T minus 20. So the value KD at any temperature T is equal to KD 20 into 1 point. This you have already learned in second module. KD 20 into 1.047 raised to T minus 20. Usually we may be able to take this as uh, in a range 0.1 to 0.2. If it is not given, you, you can assume it between 0.1 to 0.2. AR, uh, it is equal to 3.9 root V divided by Y raised to 1.5. Here V is the average stream velocity in meter per second. Y is the average stream depth in meter. AR at any temperature T is equal to AR at 20 degrees Celsius into 1.016 raised to T minus 20. This also you have learned earlier. Critical time TC after which the minimum dissolved oxygen occurs can be found by differentiating this equation and equating to zero. So that is where deficit is maximum. So Tc is equal to 1 by Kr minus Kd into log into Kd L minus Kr into D0 plus Kd into D0 divided by Kd into L multiplied by Kr by Kd. Maximum deficit Dc is equal to KD into L by KR into 10 raised to minus KD into TC. Here we make a substitution for KR by KD ratio. It is expressed as F which is known as self-purification constant. Instead of KR by KD, we are making a substitution as F. This is known as self-purification constant. Self-purification constant takes different values for small ponds value is between 0.5 to 1. For large lakes and other um, sluggish uh, streams and all, 1 to 1.5. And for rapid uh, waterfalls and all, it is taken as greater than 5. Rapid mixing takes place in such cases. Substituting this Kr by Kd is equal to F. Tc becomes 1 by Kd into F minus 1 into log 1 minus F minus 1 into D naught by L into F. DC is equal to L by F into 10 raised to minus KD into TC. Log DC we can take as log L by F minus KD into TC. Substituting and making rearrangements. Finally this expression becomes L by DC into F raised to F minus 1 equal to F into 1 minus F minus 1 into D naught by L. All these factors that is KR, KD and of course F, F is equal to KR by KD. All these depends upon the temperature. The equations I will once again summarize. Et is equal to Kd into L by Kr minus Kd into 10 raised to minus Kd into T minus 10 raised to minus Kr into T plus D naught into 10 raised to minus Kr into T. D naught into 10 raised to minus Kr into T. Kd at any temperature T is equal to Kd 20 into 1.047 raised to T minus 20. Kr at any temperature T is equal to Kr 20 into 1.016 raised to T minus 20. Time taken for critical DO TC is equal to 1 by Kr minus Kd log Kd L minus Kr into D naught plus Kd into D naught divided by Kd into L multiplied by Kr by Kd. TC is equal to 
kd into l by kr into 10 raised to minus kd into tc. kr by kd is equal to f. The substitution is made and tc becomes 1 by kd into f minus 1 log 1 minus f minus 1 into d naught by l into f. tc is equal to l by f into 10 raised to minus kd into tc. L by DC into F raised to F minus 1 is equal to F into 1 minus F minus 1 into D naught by L. Basic expression, this one you have to study. Other equations you may be able to derive. Now these equations you have to remember because we will be using these equations for solving the problems. Let us take problems, a few problems. First problem, a wastewater effluent flowing at 560 liters per second with a BOD 50 milligram per liter, DO 3 milligram per liter and temperature 23 degrees Celsius enters a river where the flow is 28 meter cube per second and BOD is 4 milligram per liter. Its dissolved oxygen is 8.2 milligram per liter. Temperature is 17 degrees Celsius. K1. K1 is actually standing for KD. Uh, K1 of waste is 0.1 per day at 20 degrees Celsius. Velocity of water in the river downstream is 0.18 meter per second and depth is 1.2 meter. Determine the flowing uh, following after mixing of wastewater with the river water. Now uh, this is a direct question only. You have to find out the combined discharge. BOD of the mix, dissolved oxygen of the mix and temperature. What, which equation you will use? This is based on the simple mass balance expression which we have initially discussed. Here, for all this, C is equal to CS QS plus CR QR divided by QS plus QR can be used. So, all the data is expressed here. Only one thing which you have to remember is, here in the question, it is mentioned that river is flowing 28 meter cube per second while the wastewater is flowing at a rate 560 liters per second. So we have to convert both these two same units. So we will convert QS that is the sewage flow into meter cube per second. River is flowing with 28 meter cube per second that sewage is having 0.56 meter cube per second. Concentrations are given for BOD it is 50 and 4, DO 3 and 8.2, temperature 23 degrees Celsius and 17 degrees Celsius. K1 is given as 0.1 per day. These are the given data. First we are asked to find out combined discharge. How will you get combined discharge? Combined discharge is the sum of these two flow in same units. You have to add up 0.56 with 28. So you will be getting 0.56 plus 28 equal to 28.56 meter cube per second. That is the combined discharge. What is the BOD? So here BOD can be found out by using this expression. CS QS plus CR QR divided by QS plus QR. CS, this is the concentration in sewage. What is the concentration in sewage? It is 50 milligram per liter. So 50 into QS is the quantity of flow, 0.56 plus CR is the concentration here, that is 4 milligram per liter and it is into 28 divided by total flow. So you will get 4.9 milligram per liter as the BOD. So BOD of the sewage is 50 milligram per liter, BOD of the river water is 4 milligram per liter, dissolved oxygen of the uh, sorry, um, flow of um, sewage is 0.56 meter cube per second and flow of river is 28 meter cube per second. So considering BOD of the mix is given as 4.9 milligram per liter. Next for part is, um, subsection is finding out dissolved oxygen. How will you get dissolved oxygen? For dissolved oxygen also, you consider the dissolved oxygen in sewage, consider the dissolved oxygen present in the river. So, this quantity multiplied by the flow taking place plus this quantity multiplied by the flow taking place divided by total flow. Dissolved oxygen is equal to 3 into 
0.56 plus 8.2 into 28 divided by total flow 0.56 plus 28. You will get dissolved oxygen as 8.098 milligram per liter. Temperature of the mix. Temperature of sewage is 23 degrees Celsius. So 23 into 0.56 plus here the temperature is 17 degrees Celsius. So 17 into 28 divided by sum of the flow. So here we are getting 17.12 degrees Celsius as the resulting temperature of the resulting mix. So here we are applying the um, expression and substituting the various concentrations in that and we are solving for the um, all parameters. Next we will solve another question. A city discharges 100 cumex of sewage into a river, 100 meter cube per second of sewage into a river which is at 20 degrees Celsius and fully saturated with oxygen flowing at the rate of 1500 cumex with a velocity of 0.1 meter per second. So, sewage quantity is 100 meter cube per second that is at 20 degree Celsius uh, into a river, uh, it is discharged into a river which is at 20 degree Celsius and fully saturated with oxygen and it is flowing at the rate of 1500 cumex with a velocity of 0.1 meter per second. The 5 day BOD of sewage at the given temperature is 280 milligram per liter. Find when and where the critical DO deficit will occur in the downstream portion of the river and determine its amount. Assume coefficient of self purification of stream as 4 and coefficient of deoxygenation as 0.1. We are asked to find out critical DO deficit, amount of that, and the uh, time of occurrence and the position where it will occur. How will you approach this particular problem? Here, initial DO of the river is given. Uh, it is, uh, let us assume, uh, it, is it is mentioned that it is saturated, under saturated condition. So, at 20 degrees Celsius, let us assume that as 9.2 milligram per liter. Initially, DO of the mix, that is at the starting point, DO of the mix equal to, how will you get that? This is the dissolved oxygen of the river. That into 9.2 is the dissolved oxygen of the river multiplied by quantity of flow. That is 1500 cumex, 1500 meter cube per second plus dissolved oxygen of sewage multiplied by its quantity. What is the dissolved oxygen of the sewage? Here the dissolved oxygen of sewage, let us assume that as the BOD is very high, let us assume that it is not having dissolved oxygen present in that. So, assuming dissolved oxygen is equal to 0 there, 0 into 100 divided by total flow. So, we will get dissolved oxygen of mix at initial starting point as 8.62 milligram per liter. Therefore, initial DO deficit is equal to D0 that is equal to saturation DO minus the actual DO. So, 9.2 minus 8.62 will give us initial DO deficit that is equal to 0.58 milligram per liter. 5 day BOD of the mixture of sewage and stream. 5 day BOD, let us take it as uh, C. C is equal to CSQS plus CRQR divided by QS plus QR. It is equal to CS. CS is the concentration of that pollutant in the sewage. That is given as 280 milligram per liter. So 280 into flow 100 cumex plus 0 into 1500. Divide, we are assuming that in the river water there is no BOD initially. So that divided by the total flow, we will get the 5 day BOD as 17.5 milligram per liter. 5 day BOD it can be expressed as Y5 is equal to. L into 1 minus 10 raised to minus D into 5. Here, L is the ultimate BOD. It is an unknown. So, 5 day BOD is equal to 17.5. So, 17.5 is equal to ultimate BOD L into 1 minus 10 raised to minus KD into 5. KD, deoxygenation coefficient is taken as 0 0.1. So, 0 0.1 into 5. So, from this ultimate BOD L is equal to 25.58 milligram per liter.
using the expression L by dc into f raise to f minus 1 equal to f into 1 minus f minus 1 into d naught by L. We know L here, it is equal to 25.58 milligram per liter. That divided by dc. What is dc? dc we have calculated as So, DC is the unknown, critical deficit is the unknown. So, 25.58 divided by DC into F, F is given as 4. So, the self purification of the stream F is given as 4. So, 25.58 divided by DC into 4 raised to F minus 1. F minus 1 is 4 minus 1, that is equal to 3, that is equal to F into 1 minus F minus 1 is again 3 multiplied by D naught. D naught is the initial DO deficit we have calculated as 9.2 minus 8.62, 0 0.58 milligram per liter divided by 25.58 is the ultimate BOD L. From this we are getting the answer for DC. DC is equal to 4.12 milligram per liter. This is one part of the question. Then we need to find out its uh, when it will occur. So, the time taken for occurrence of critical deficit, Tc is equal to 1 by Kd into F minus 1 into log F into 1 minus F minus 1 into D naught by L. It is equal to 1 by Kd is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 into 4 minus 1 log F is 4, 1 minus F minus 1 into D naught by L, 3 into 0.58 divided by 25.58, substituting Tc we are getting as 1.905 days. Okay. In the question, it is asked, find when and where the critical DO deficit will occur. So, the time taken for occurrence of that deficit is equal to 1.905 days. Again, it is asked, where is its occurrence? So, we need to find out the distance. How will you get the distance? Distance is equal to velocity of the river into travel time required. So, what is the velocity? Where it is given? You read the question. It is mentioned that this river flows with a velocity of 0 0.1 meter per second. So, substituting for that, distance is equal to 0 0.1 into travel time required. 1.905 days. These days you have to convert to seconds. So, 1.905 into 24 into 60 into 60. So, distance is equal to 16,460 meters or 16.46 kilometers. Hence, the critical deficit point occurs at a point 16.46 kilometer downstream from the point of sewage disposal and it occurs after 1.905 days. Maximum amount is obtained as 4.12 milligram per liter. Hello, ma'am. Ah, okay. Ma'am, do we have further questions? Do we have any further question, ma'am, in the slide? Um, any um, discussion? Any any query is no, there? Or? Uh, only the one hour was allotted. Now it's uh, almost four o'clock. Okay, then I will. Uh, discuss the university questions and then we will conclude. Okay, ma Here, we discussed two problems and I, I have included some more problems that we will share the PPT later. You may discuss uh, read from that. Let us see the last year's university examination question paper. This is from May 2019, uh, our KTU question paper. Uh, here a question is asked, a city discharge, this, from, from this particular portion, I have selected the question. A city discharges 100 meter cube per second of sewage into a river, which is fully saturated with oxygen, flowing at the rate of 1500 meter cube per second and with a velocity of 0 0.2 meter per second. The five-day BOD of sewage at the given temperature is 250 milligram per liter 
find when and where the critical d or deficit will occur in the downstream portion of the river and what is its amount assume coefficient of purification f was 4 and coefficient of deoxygenation as 0.1 this is the same problem which we discussed just now so it is same like this problem problem number 2 the same question okay velocity of the river is given as 0.2 meter per second in the question and all other data is given find when and where the critical d or deficit will occur that was what we have asked so that was a direct question very uh, important question also from this topic and now come uh, we have only one question paper from our university ktu only one batch have passed out and now uh, from other universities from mg university some questions i will read what is self purification phenomena of streams discuss in brief the natural forces effecting self purification that is the first part of our discussion what do you mean by reoxygenation curve when deoxygenation curve i hope you may be able to answer this also then another question these are from five different years what do you understand by self purification of a stream explain the factors that affect this property what do you understand by self purification of a stream that is what you have to understand based on my discussion today explain self purification process of river and the various zones of oxygen sector we discuss the different zones that also you can write and in calicut university some questions are discuss in detail the pollution assimilation capacity of streams it is same as self purification capacity how does the self purification of a stream occur when it has been polluted by the discharge of waste on it describe in detail various stages of self purification stating the characteristics of each stage this also we discussed how assimilation capacity of stream is decided this was asked in another year how does self purification of a stream occur when it has been polluted by the discharge of waste in it describe in detail the various stages of self purification all these were asked in different different years and the textbooks Uh, which you can refer for my pr presentation i have uh, referred these textbooks which are uh, prescribed in our syllabus uh, sewage disposal and air pollution engineering by sk gar water supply and engineering by gs birdy and wastewater engineering by pc bond all these uh, are included so these are the important points which i wanted to discuss thank you for the listening and if any further clarifications are there we may Ma'am, we are discussing this same constraint. I will show you this, and we can display it in our official channel. Okay. So we had a wonderful session. Ajay Ma'am has given a wonderful session. She took a great effort in preparing the session and making it so easy to understand. Thank you so much for your time and patience, Ma'am. Also, thanking all the participants. video and transcript for the session will be made available in our website also those questions which are unanswered will also be answered there please do attend the remaining session stay home stay safe and make maximum out of this time in improving yourself thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you thank you the session is completed participants can leave the session thank you sir Can I leave the session as such? The session, ma'am. Sure. Let me stop the sharing. Sure. Stop the sharing. Sure. Parvati, I am disconnected. Ah, ma'am, just. Okay. Leave this.